What is before? What is what? What what what, what is this for? Oh, this is for um for my uh the website I work for, Pop Rap. Oh, it's for Pop Rap. Okay, yeah, it's got for it. Thank yeah. you. No worries. Um, so, how does it feel to be kind of the iconic voices in children's television? Yeah, Tom, how yeah. does it feel? <laughs> hey, man, it's great because, like, you know, it started out as children's television, and not all those children are all grown up. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the Comic-Con experience has is, is really changed for us. It's still, you know, little kids, uh, you know, holding their parents' hands because SpongeBob is still on a, you know, a network that, that has a lot of kids stuff on yeah. it, and, and it's on new episodes right every day. But people that have a deeper years and years and years and years long relationship also come to these uh, these cons now, and so it's uh, yeah, it's 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 deep. It feels it feels really good. It's great, you know, because I really love what we do. I love it, and I love my character. If if it, if the whole thing was just kind of an irritating slog then it would be kind of an awful thing one would have to endure. But I love it, so, and, and these people, people of all walks of life, you know, will just open themselves up to you. It's, it's really cool, it's kind of a privilege. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun, You're, you, you know, like we've been around long enough that now I feel like we're part of like this larger fabric, you know, mm -hmm. of pop culture, you know, part of this thing that I grew up loving and we, we have demonstrated enough legs that it looks like we're gonna be you know, in the story, you know, we're going to be in the books, you know, for a while, or maybe forever uh, in terms of, of, the, of history. So it, it's kind of fun, you know, it's like, wow, okay, so if uh, maybe if uh, Looney Tunes and Max Fleischer and all that stuff was like, you know, Muddy Waters and Howlin' Wolf, maybe we're like the animals. <laughs> maybe we're like the animals or, uh, you know. Right. So we're, <laughs> we're at least be... Jerry and the Pacemakers. We're the Jerry and the Pacemakers. We'll of, be in uh, a state fair in <laughs> Iowa in a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> rocking, rocking the oldies. So, um, you know, SpongeBob and Patrick are really kind of iconic, especially for, like, my generation and for, like, my brother and I. We, we grew up on SpongeBob and just we bonded over that. Uh, but are there any other characters you particularly love to play? On SpongeBob or other? Doesn't matter. Just in the <laughs> universe. In in the universe. Well, uh, you know, SpongeBob is uh, you know still really a joy to do and a lot of laughs and a lot of fun. Largely in part because of because uh, I like it and I like him mm -hmm. and I like the other characters on the show too and the people that play them. So uh, so that's yeah. So that's like a really. Uh, you know, something, something that I know we're very, very lucky to have. Mm. But, you know, in terms of other shows... Uh, Come on. Uh, I, like the, I like the Ice <laughs> King, you know, it's fun to play a troubled uh, guy, you Ice know, King. Yeah. Time. Ice King is good, and, you know, the mayor of Powerpuff Girls, the befuddled, mm. dumb mm. politician, and, you know... I'm actually, I'm actually using my own voice on a couple of cartoons now, which is kind of a nice... Wow. Uh, kind of a weird experience, you know, <laughs> you're just like, wow. They, they go, just do it yourself, you know? Like, like playing like dads and stuff like that, you know? And uh, like normal guy dads. Do you, can you remember what character you played in the, uh, uh, on the, we worked together very early in each of our careers. We were together. Yeah. There was an episode of uh, uh, Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, there, there was a- Hanna-Barbera. There was a short-lived Dumb and Dumber animated iteration, you know, and I, I, I don't think I was, the, I was I a Jeff Daniels aired, you know? character. Yeah, I it. He was, was the Jeff Daniels voice yeah, match. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I was and like, you did a guess I can't remember the character's name, but he was a bad guy that was based on Ross Perot, which at the time was topical, so that will tell you <laughs> how freaking long ago it was. Okay. But uh, yeah, Ross Perot is like ripped from today's headlines. <laughs> but I don't remember, I should look it up. It's hard to find any reference to that show. It's like totally... Uh, forgotten, like it fell, it fell off of the IMDb. Like swing and a miss. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just. Uh, oh, amazing! Any stone is able uh, to be left unturned nowadays. But. I tend to specialize in idiots, so <laughs> I've played idiots on camera and off camera. And evidently, it's my strength. <laughs> I mostly tend to play uh, so uh, I, dim I bulb uh, characters too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the occasional evil genius, but mostly dim bulbs. I was gonna say Simon doesn't seem like a like a dim bulb to uh to me, but yeah, right. He's just like a confused bulb. <laughs> he's a troubled. He's a very troubled bulb. He he gets a bit dimmer once he puts the crown on. I exactly. Think. I, I think it's the you ice know, Yeah, he's, he's got he's got wiring uh, problems, but he's not uh, predisposed to be a dope. 
Yeah. SpongeBob isn't either, but I, th- I think SpongeBob just doesn't care. Like SpongeBob, <clears> doesn't, <throat> you know, I, SpongeBob and Patrick, both as characters, don't have filters. You know, like they, they kind of well, just, just do whatever they want. Childlike nature. Yeah, I, I think that's a lot of what kids and yeah. you know, uh, something we talk about, like even you know, kids that are on the spectrum, like autistic kids and stuff like that, like tend to really love this show and these characters and you know that that's my theory about why those kids why we hear so much from those kids and parents of those kids is I think you know Spongebob and Patrick are different from everybody else too and they just are cool with it and, and, and <laughs> impulsive mm-hmm. so uh, one of my favorite episodes is when Spongebob is going out to get his driver's license and <laughs> Patrick is behind the mic and he's telling him how to drive and how to do everything. And it seems like such a character shift from, from how Patrick normally is, because SpongeBob is usually the responsible one. He's got the job, he's got you know, the tidy house, he's got Gary, he's got you know, all this stuff, and Patrick has his rock. His rock he's got yeah. a tidy house and tidy whities. Well, that's the great thing about the relationship with the characters is SpongeBob isn't afraid to turn to Patrick for guidance. <laughs> yeah, and help but, on it. I mean, that's a, an important dynamic. Actually. Yeah, it's fun when those things, when they flip, you know, like when Patrick becomes the voice of reason, like Patrick's like the coach, you're like the smart guy, you know what I mean? But, sorry to use the word coach. <laughs> but, uh, uh, that, that's, that's always fun, but, you know, like occasionally some little kid will go, you know, why does, why does Spongebob hang around with Patrick? Patrick is so dumb. And I go, Patrick's not dumb. And no way does Spongebob. Spongebob thinks right? Patrick's the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> you know, which he probably is. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. Like, um, when the paradigm gets shifted, it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. But so what, what was one of your favorite episodes to film together? Well, you know, um, we have, uh, I would say pretty much every uh Recording has its share of uh, laughs, you know. It, you know, it's it's a pretty, you know, you know what you're doing, and you know, the only pressure really comes from if you got a whole lot of stuff to catch up on and like a workload that that you only have four hours to do. But like yeah, in terms of like, you know, like it, by the time we get in the booth, everybody's like sweated over the scripts and the rewrites and the yeah. uh, the uh, storyboards and all the sausage that we don't have to be around watching get made is right, made. <laughs> right, right, right. All the slave Sorry, writers. sausage makers. Sausage <laughs> writers, we, uh, storyboard artists, writers, too. <laughs> the sausage party has, <laughs> uh, has ended. And, uh, and we, uh, you know, we come in just to have fun, but, yeah. but you know, I mean, uh, there's an episode called Sailor Mouth where uh, the characters, uh, you know, uh, cuss, you know, and that, 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 was, that was fun to do because it, it, it all got bleeped uh, later. Um, but that recording was really fun, pre bleeping. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that was a unique thing. I, I always appreciated the pilot. The pilot was really fun. And, you know, and I had no idea what the show was at the point. That's what made it so special because I didn't get it. You know, and we were actually, we had a helium tank. We're almost done! Um, we, we had a, a helium tank um, in the studio, and we were all taking hits of helium going eat, eat, eat. We were the anchovies when the anchovies pull in uh, and, and crabs freaks out. Anchovies. <laughs> and, uh, and so and that was great. But we that just did We didn't really need that. We, we didn't need it, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we just did an episode that was really funny. I don't know when it will air where, uh, where uh, Squidward passes out from exhaustion and but he's going to make his audition for the Bikini Bottom Orchestra, and so we want to help him. So SpongeBob and Patrick climb inside of Squidward, and to, to we're working him like a puppet. It's, 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 like, it's like Squidward cosplay, but our costume is really Squidward. Right. Flesh. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, it's something you can so only. Demented. That's where animation is the bomb, yeah, you know? Because yeah. you're like you're like you can never. Live action, man. You're never gonna, you're never gonna see a character literally climb into another Can't one's go there. skin and like, you know, <laughs> like a, but not without billions of dollars of CGI uh, uh, effects. So it's, uh, it, it's really fun. Yeah, there's, it's, it's a pretty convivial uh, experience recording on that show. It's, it's not too angsty. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how you, I mean, I know how they would climb into him because I have seen that. Yeah. Happened before, but I'm like, did they get a 
shrink ray? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, they're actual no, size. just like uh, just squash like and a, stretch, man. Squash like and stretch. Like a dishwashing glove. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> they're, they're collapsible. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I won't ask you any of the uh, the questions that I heard the other guy asking. You know, the whole <laughs> casting thing. <laughs> that, He's so competitive. That, that would be redundant. No. <laughs> so, uh, is there anything else you wanna you wanna let people know about about your characters? We well, you know, we're recording uh, new episodes. There's, you know, a lot of really funny stuff and some and, great stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. the, 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 this season for some reason has been really, really like visually driven and animation driven. So, you know, that stuff we were talking about that only animation can do. It's like, a, it seems like the animators and the storyboard guys are really you know... Yeah, well, we had a long break. break. We had a long break to do that last movie, so it was like... Sponge out of water. So, coming back after that uh, experience, that was, there was this great energy. Yeah, so it has a great invigorated feel and a lot of interesting um, uh, guest voices uh, yeah. uh, you know, coming up that I think people are going to Enjoy and John uh, Ham, yeah. Can we say him? Yeah, that one aired, right? You can say that one. It doesn't air yet. It has We're still doing. Oh, those. we're still doing promos for promos that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, John Ham. Surprise. Yeah, it's, as as Don Grouper. Yeah. <laughs> my wife, my wife wasn't working on the show that day, but she somehow managed to show up at Nickelodeon Studios uh, on that day. I think I'll stop by today. Yeah. You forgot your lunch. It's like I never bring a lunch to work. I've never brought a lunch to work in 35 years. I mean, I forgot my lunch. You do today. <laughs> She's like, you know, just chasing John Ham's car down Olive Avenue. But uh, it was, <laughs> but it was, uh, yeah, so stuff like that. I don't know what we. I never know what's. We can talk about what we can uh, in terms of uh, press announcements and stuff like that. But a lot of interesting uh, voice cast guest stars, with the hamster being one of them. And he was great. He was and he was funny. lovely. Yeah, he was very funny. All right. Well, thank you so much. Hey, thanks yeah. for uh, talking to us. Thank you, Roxanne. <laughs>